box. It's Madison here with day four of our salute of noble Alabamians of African descent. Today's honoree is Carrie A. Tuggle. She was an Af African American educator, philanthropist, and social activist in Birmingham, Alabama at the turn of the 20th century. Born on May 28, 1858 in Ufala, Alabama, she married John Tuggle, a native of Columbus, Ohio, and they moved to Birmingham in search of better economic opportunities or economic opportunities and more robust social scene. The couple had four children. Tuggle began her rise in Birmingham in 1891. She became active with the Order of Caliphate, one of the oldest and most successful African American women run fraternal insurance organizations in the U.S. She held the position of Grand Worthy Counselor until 1899. In 1901, she was appointed to the Office of Supreme Worthy Counselor. Understanding the importance of sharing ideas and information in a building strong community. One year later, she found the Birmingham Truth, a weekly African American newspaper. As a social worker, she counseled delinquent African American boys, often appearing in court with them. At this time in history, black juveniles were tried in the same courts as adults. Ms. Tuggle saw the injustice of the situation and was instrumental in the formation of the Jefferson County Juvenile and Domestic Court, aka Family Court. Early in her career as a social worker, worker, Tuggle pleaded before a court to pardon two juvenile delinquents from prison, sentenced by volunteering to take them under her care and reform them. On September 3, 1903, she opened the Tuggle Institute. The Tuggle Institute functioned with support from the order. The Institute's main objective was to provide a home and education to destitute children. From a very modest start, the Institute became an important factor in the advancement of African Americans. Dr. Arthur George Gaston one of the first African-American multimillionaires in the South recalled when he was growing up, he was always getting into scuffles with the son of the white family where his mother worked. Dr. Gaston said he was rescued from the trouble and his mother's job was saved when a kindly old black woman named Miss Carrie A. Tuggle convinced his mother to place him in her school, which was created to help with such situations. He said, I shall never forget Miss Tuggle and the tremendous influence she had on my life. What education I did get, she was responsible for. Whatever I am today, Grandma Tuggle made me. She was everything to me. When I was a boy growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, two other notable students of her institute include musicians John Tuggle, Fess, Watley, and Erskine Hawkins in 1919. The Tuggle Institute burned down in a suspected arson attack. Following the fire, the school moved to a nearby church where the teaching and care of children continued until the institute's building was reconstruction and eventually gained the reputation as one of the most effective and beneficial institutions of the South. With limited resources, Ms. Tuggle struggled to raise funds to maintain the Institute. The continued stress, stress of running the Institute had an adverse effect on her health. During the last six months of her life, she was bedridden. And after Ms. Tuggle's death in 1924, she was lauded as the female Booker T. Washington by the Birmingham News. Two years after her death, the Tuggle Institute became part of the Birmingham City Public Schools.